Sam Bankman-Fried was one of the richest people in crypto. He was a founder of two businesses, a crypto exchange called FTX and a trading firm called Alameda Research. FTX was on track to be the fastest growing crypto exchange and it looked like they were setting themselves up to dominate the scene in the next bull run. But in November of 2022, this all came crashing down. Sam's net worth went from 20 billion down to zero in just one week, and since then, things have progressively got worse. On the 2nd of November 2022, Coindesk released an article sharing some alarming numbers on Alameda Research's balance sheet. The Coindesk article highlighted that Alameda Research had $14.6 billion of assets and around $8 billion was made up of FTT tokens. Now, for Alameda to have FTT on their balance sheet is not alarming, but what is alarming is how much. $8 billion worth of FTT was listed. According to FTX's own website, there were only about 197 million FTT tokens in circulation worth $5.1 billion. Things weren't adding up. Investors started to question the solvency of FTX, but generally things were calm. FTT kept its price. When the Coindesk article was published, the price of FTT was at $25. The following day, this dropped to $24, but soon recovered back to $25 by the 5th of November. But this was just the calm before the storm. On the 6th of November, CZ, the founder of Binance, tweeted that Binance had FTT on their balance sheet and will be looking to sell all FTT tokens in the coming days. The reason Binance, the number one crypto exchange, is holding tokens from the number two exchange is that back in 2019, CZ invested in FTX. CZ saw the potential and it made sense for both parties to team up, as they would dominate the crypto markets. But this partnership didn't last long and in 2021, Sam bought back the shares from CZ and paid in BNB and FTT. CZ was holding on to these tokens all this time, but now with the recent news, it was time to sell. CZ was holding approximately $2 billion worth of FTT, and if he was to sell it all at once, it would crash the price. This announcement by itself caused mayhem in the crypto markets. Anyone who was holding FTT in their portfolio was rushing to sell before the crash, but this in itself was what caused the crash. FTT went from $25 per token to $2 per token in just four days. During this crash, Sam was reassuring investors that everything was fine and that they had enough in reserves to buy back all tokens. FTX would soon freeze all withdrawals on the 11th of November. They would file for bankruptcy. This is seen as one of the biggest destructions of wealth. Sam's net worth went from $20 billion to zero. But this was just the start. As part of the bankruptcy, Sam Bankman-Fried stepped down as CEO and John Ray took his place. John is an American attorney and insolvency professional. He specializes in recovering funds from failed corporations. With all of this experience, John Ray says he has never seen anything as bad as FTX. Ray goes on to say, Never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. In all honesty, it's surprising FTX was able to make it this far. For their accounting, they were using QuickBooks. QuickBooks is an accounting software package aimed at small to medium-sized businesses, not multi-billion dollar corporations. The bankruptcy papers also highlighted that there was no set system to clear expenses of employees, and they were approved through online chat platforms via emojis, and that's for the messages that they could see. Sam often communicated by using applications that were set to auto-delete after a short period of time and encouraged employees to do the same. But the biggest issue came down to FTX's terms and conditions. In their terms and conditions, they specifically say that they will never transfer users' funds, but this was a lie. 
In the aftermath, it was reported that Sam Bankman-Fried quietly transferred $10 billion of customer funds from FTX to its sister trading company, Alameda Research. To make matters worse, a large chunk of that $10 billion is missing. Following reports revealed a backdoor into the company's books built using bespoke software. The sources said the back door allowed Bankman Fried to alter the company's financial records without alerting other people. That meant the transfer of $10 billion did not set off any alarms. The evidence was piling up against Sam Bankman Fried. There was no doubt in anyone's mind that he was involved in criminal behavior, but he didn't see it that way. Sam continued to be a guest in various interviews. On a daily basis, he would be a part of Twitter spaces, podcasts and live streams. New articles would release every day sharing the latest insight into the FTX collapse and every article had a comment from Sam, giving more information on the situation. Weeks went by and still Sam was taking interviews. Despite the downfall, he was loving the fact he was the centre of attention. He felt like he was untouchable. A month went by, and with all the evidence available, he was still walking the streets. What's crazy is that despite millions of people being affected by his ignorance, there were still people out there defending him. With everything going on, the interviews, the public appearances and how others were talking about him, many believed that Sam would just walk away from this with a slap on the wrist. He was publicly admitting to crimes and there was new evidence being released every day, and he was still walking the streets as a free man. With every interview he did, he was constantly mocking investors by saying it wasn't his fault, when he was the founder of FTX. It was Sam who allowed the transfer of funds from FTX to Alameda. It was Sam who reassured investors just days before going bankrupt that FTX was safe to use. And it was Sam who made the decision to incorporate shady business practices into his business. And that's when it finally happened. On the 12th of December 2022, Sam was arrested. According to federal prosecutors, a grand jury indicted him on eight counts of wire fraud, securities fraud, money laundering and a campaign finance violation. He was denied bail later that week and was moved to Fox Hill Prison, but has since been released back to his parents on a different $250 million bail. Sam has gone on to make a statement where he says, I didn't knowingly commit fraud. I don't think I committed fraud. I didn't want any of this to happen. I was certainly not nearly as competent as I thought I was. Ever since the crash back in November, Sam has been playing the incompetence card. He has done this in every interview, where he highlights how he didn't know. But this ignorance will not save him. Sam is facing an eight-count federal indictment that could see him sentenced up to 115 years in prison if he is convicted and given the maximum sentence. The reason the sentence is so much is because of the sheer scale. This is a multi-billion dollar fraud committed against customers and lenders across multiple years. This will contribute to the length of any prison sentence Bankman Fried gets if prosecutors can prove their case. And this is where it backfires on Sam. Every interview he did, every time he gave a statement or every time he spoke on the situation, is now more evidence that could be used against him in a court of law. Sam even said that his lawyers were against him speaking publicly, and yet Sam decided to do what he wanted. Yet again, highlighting that he thinks he is untouchable. This story is far from over. Sam will have his day in court, and even though it's unlikely he will get a 115-year sentence, many believe he will serve time. Sentences in major fraud cases can vary, with Bernie Madoff receiving a 150-year sentence and being ordered to pay $170 billion to victims in 2009 after he defrauded thousands of investors of tens of billions of dollars over a period of 17 years. In Enron's case, executives of the disgraced energy company were convicted years after the scandal. Kenneth Lay, one of the company's founders, died before he 
was sentenced to 45 years in prison, while Jeffrey Skilling, Enron's former CEO, served 12 years of his 24-year sentence. With all of this, most are confident that Sam will need to serve time. More than a million people have lost their money due to FTX, but this is just the start. Every other company that used FTX's services were also affected. If you had money in crypto, it's likely you also lost money even if you were not using the FTX platform. The crypto market cap went from $1 trillion down to $791 billion in just one week. That's a 20% decrease across the whole crypto market. This severely hurt crypto, and even when we look back on this years from now, we will still see the damage that Sam and FTX caused. No matter how much you believe in crypto, there will always be bad actors in the space. Sam Bankman-Fried is one of them, but he's not the only one. The next video available on screen right now is about a husband and wife who stole $4.5 billion worth of Bitcoin in a crypto heist like never seen before, and they would have got away with it if it wasn't for one small mistake. If you want to know how they did it, click the video on screen right now, and we'll be over there to share the full story.